Yes, a herd of elephants here at the main south crossing. They are not crossing, they are having a drink. There they go. I'm just cleaning my monitor so I can see what's going on. Beautiful light and you can see the wind blowing very strongly indeed. And I think elephants must really enjoy living in the Mara. There's lots to eat. And most importantly, there's this lifeline of a river which never dries up, well, very, very seldom dries up, flowing through the middle. New water coming down each day. I think it's a great elephant place to live. Now, we've been asked many times about what animals cross here. We know the wildebeest and zebra dirt. We've seen topi crossing. We haven't seen any Tommies this year, but we have seen them last year. We have seen elephant crossing. We've seen one giraffe crossing. And we've had one very, very interesting lion crossing as well. So we've had some very nice crossings of animals. And I'm still trying to think if there's anything that I haven't seen cross the river that I think possibly would. Maybe waterbuck. They might go across. But certainly we've seen Impala come down, stick their heads in. They haven't crossed the river yet. But it's always so interesting to see what is prepared to take the risk and then to try and work out why on earth they would do it. Now, we've discussed also the difference in tusks between here and South Africa, between here and the Kruger. And we've made mention of the thickness, that they're probably thicker in the Kruger than they are here, that here... I think, on average, they are longer. And also, the females often have those sort of decurved tusks in the same way that, um, that bulls might. In Kruger, I find the females there, the cows, have got much straighter tusks. They don't have the curved ones that they do here. And very peaceful. There's nothing quite so peaceful as watching elephants. Liz, I, <laughs> I've never heard of this. It's fascinating. You say, do black rhino gather in groups on full moon nights like they do in Botswana? Liz, I have never heard of this phenomenon before. Certainly as we drove around in the full moon last night, wafting our spotlight around, we didn't see any great gatherings of black rhino uh, dancing or singing druidical tunes. Um, I'm just being slightly facetious there. So no, I, don't, I mean, they might. I'm not sure. We just certainly didn't see any evidence of it. But Liz, if you could give me some sort of reference for the Botswana phenomenon, I'd be really, really interested. If you could tweet it through to us, that'd be great. Heat is starting to build a little bit now, which is nice, after a chilly morning. And I think that's why animals are coming down to drink. And I did just want to share with you one more thing about what we saw down south without you, unfortunately. And it was, well, it's not actually that unfortunate for you. We saw a huge number of dead wildebeest still at the Burungat Bridge. That's the bridge at the far south. And uh, we must have seen 200 carcasses of wildebeest there that have drowned somehow, being eaten by hundreds of vultures and marabou stalks. I'm sure the hyenas come down at night. Now, there's a huge resource of food sitting down there, and how those animals died, why they died, uh, I'm not sure. But it was a, it was a really... It's quite easy to just kind of gloss over it. You sort of drive over, you see, oh, there's a pile of dead wildebeest and keep going until you stop and you look and you think, wow, that's it's almost like a mass grave of them. And then it becomes quite disturbing, the number of them that die. And seemingly needlessly, you know, I, mean, I don't know why they cross the river. I don't know why they panic when they're in the river like they do, but they do. And they're the only animals that seem to, yes, there's the odd zebra that does it, but really not so many um, as the wildebeest. I wondered exactly the same thing, Sable. You wanted to know what stops the animals from just using the bridge. Um, I think it's just fear. They don't know what it is. They don't actually understand what a bridge is. And I was just thinking to myself, if I was a wildebeest, well, I'd be going down south and crossing the bridge. I'd been getting into the water at all. Really good question. Let's see if the elephants are still drinking. They are still drinking. I just want to quickly see that thing with the big tusks there. It might be a young bull, in which case he's going to be 
a monstrously magnificent fellow one day. Yeah, I think he is. Fern, did you say, could you still enjoy bathing in the Mara with so many crocs? Is that the correct uh, question, Alice? Oh, elephants bathing. Yes, they absolutely do. Uh, they don't have to worry too much about crocodiles. I've, I thought you were asking, Fern, if, if I found bathing less pleasant here because of the crocodiles. I was going to say I'm more of a shower man than a bath man. But here we have a herd of elephants that would happily take to the water to swim. The thing with this water is, I think much more than the crocs, Fern, is that it's not still, and it's very seldom deep enough for them to have proper swims. We have seen them have swims from time to time, but these crossing points are full of rapids, and so they tend to be much more drinking points than swimming points for things like these elephants. But yes, they'd absolutely swim in the water if the fancy took them. A crocodile, although weighing up to a ton, uh, he's not n any kind of competition for an elephant. Now, Byron Sabao, off in South Africa, has managed to find himself a footprint in the sand. It is the footprint of a rodent, uh, a very large and protected rodent, the biggest rodent in Africa.